Hello. Um, spending the morning in my room making videos, I'm starting to feel a lot like uh, Emily Dickinson in, in, in many ways. Um, so I'll make this a, a short one and really this is only required for, for external students um, who uh, weren't in uh, the lecture this, this week. So this this week in great books we are looking at um, autobiographies and particularly Rousse we we looked at Rousseau's uh, confessions uh, in in the in the in the uh, lecture. So um, things to 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 note with um, with Rousseau's confessions uh, really it's it's breaking with established con uh, uh, conven literary conventions concerning autobiography quite, quite profoundly. Um, in, in the sense of its, its, its honesty and, and its uh, 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 depiction of um, uh, aspects of his personal uh, psychology and, 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 and uh, psychosexual um, uh, thought and um, feelings that uh, that would have been completely taboo or or, or something that you wouldn't find in, um, in 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 published works of the time. Um, so, I mean, his in a, in a class we kind of compared it to. Um, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, in in in, in a sense, um, that a few years ago, if you went to the airport, you'll find uh, piles of of copies of Fifty Shades of Grey that people would pick up on the run and and read on their flight, um, uh, that kind of thing, and, and 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 kind of then then you know sort of uh, then hide in shame kind of thing. It, it was almost the same thing with, with Rousseau's Confessions that. Um, uh, it was it was it was read in secret and and with with a bit of delight and also a bit of um, a bit of fear that the the readers had that perhaps on the next page their secrets would be divulged by uh, by Rousseau um, so so it was read it was attended to um, however it uh, uh, was a radical departure from previ previous works. Um, when, when, when I read Rousseau, one, one thing that strikes me is that I, I don't really have a profound sense of image or... or I'm not left with profound senses of, of, of image or, 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 or plots or, um, that, that stick in my memory. But what does stick in my memory is kind of Rousseau's own personal psychological character. That after reading him, you kind of feel that you know him in a very in-depth way, and as if he was sitting right next to you, even if you you can't perhaps remember what happened on on the last you know last twenty pages of, of the text. That's because the the attention that Rousseau. Um, uh, is 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 directing his work towards is his own interior psychological um, state. Um, so so in, in that sense, his work, while he's framing it as something radically different and new, um, it really isn't radically different and new. It's really can be contextualized within the Christian tradition of um, interior ob uh, psychological observation we can see that um, in, in a tradition of say Ignatius of Loyola and his spiritual exercise and diaries um, also and, 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 and most obviously in and Saint Augustine and, and Augustine's confessions um, so there's that aspect uh, the, the other thing that um, needs to be known uh, Basically, is the way this this text also exemplifies his key philosophical ideas, and I'll just go through those briefly. Um, for Rousseau, uh, 
believed that intellectual advances had brought not moral purification but corruption, not improvement but decline. Um, and we we can we can see that uh, with with uh, reference to the section where he he sent off to the countryside. Um, as a youth, and has a sense of if only he stayed there longer, he would have been more psychologically healthy. Um, the idea of being sent to the countryside, away from the city, away from the corruption of society, was a kind of uh, health for him. Um, uh, so that that links to his uh, uh, broader anthropology and his his, his broader. Uh, view of of the corruption of human society uh, so so take take note of of that um, also he notes uh, be, being from Geneva that sort of strong republican spirit profound indomitable character um, and impatience with servitude and constraint I think I think that's also an important thing to note that 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 the republican um, uh, nature of his formative environment characterized as sort of or played a part in the, the boldness of his own independence um, uh, so in many ways although this is a, this is a literary text uh, Rousseau was, was was profoundly important in, in shaping subsequent Republican thought as well so uh, so keep uh, so just be aware of that. Um, his views in many ways were, were similar to, to, to Hume's um, and he had a, a, a complex relationship with Hume in, in, a, in a sense that he, he stayed with Hume in, during the later part of his life when, when he was rejected by everyone and then, then later turned on Hume in a, in a somewhat paranoid way. Um, however, we, we can see on, on page 588 where he expresses a, a similar view to Hume's on a prioritization of feelings over thought. Um, so I, let me just read this briefly. I had feelings before I had thoughts. That is the common lot of humanity. But I was more affected by it than others are. I have no idea what I did before the age of five or six, and I do not know how I learnt to read. All I remember is that what I first read and its effects on me. This is the moment from which I date my first uninterrupted consciousness of myself. And then further down, I had conceived nothing, I had felt everything. So, um, that, that point, the sort of human uh, prioritization of emotions and feelings over, um, over rational discourse. Uh, we also see that, in a sense, his uh, modern uh, psychoanalysis wouldn't be p possible without without Rousseau here. Uh, I mean, if, if we compare this reading, um, for, for those who are doing the philosophy and science class, we'll be able to compare it to um, uh, the Freud reading we're doing in the final weeks. Um, to see the extent to which uh, Rousseau's insights into things such as what, what Freud would term the Oedipus complex and, and other psychosexual um, characteristics of, of human psychology are already noted down here in, in Rousseau. That Rousseau, in a sense, he's, um, you know, he, he demonstrates a whole range of uh, uh, psychosexual uh, complexes and... and, and um, uh, 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 you might want to call them pathologies um, uh, that that would be developed um, more greatly by by Freud later. So, I mean, even even in in, in class, one one of uh, one of my students referred to. Um, uh, Rousseau's de, uh, 
despicable act of, uh, uh, of, of, of blaming the theft of a ribbon on uh, another girl's servant, getting her into all sorts of trouble as kind of um, uh, an indication of um, a repressed um, uh, uh, desire for, for, for that female servant um, and that manifested itself in um, his meanness to her and getting her into uh, uh, all sorts of trouble. Um, so, so keep an eye on, 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 on that on page 593 we, we, we see um, the, uh, the, this sort of um, anticipations of, of later developments of um, psychological theory particularly relating to, to sexuality and infantile sexuality and de childhood development. Um, so I think I think these are the the main points that we raised in our in 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 a Socratic discussion of this particular text in class. So when when reading the, this text, just have a look at these these features, um, these core features, and the, hopefully they'll this would help you to have a richer reading of Rousseau's Confessions. Thank you.